Now we know quite a few bits about jQuery and how to work our magic on it, but we haven't really talked about something that came into the web over 20 years ago. In 1993, Mark Anderson proposed a new HTML tag. People have thought about it and decided they was exactly what the web was missing in the beginning of the digital data transfer era, when the only decoration you could see in the web were the rare characters. Once the browser started supporting the new tag, people were happy and excited about the new opportunities they had to try out for themselves. This one tag made an amazing impact on the way we see the web today, and this is why now we are going to talk about using images with jQuery. Chances are, all your blog posts and pages are going to feature at least one media object such as an image. Therefore, this is something that we can all oversee to move forward with learning jQuery. There are multiple ways we can address this problem. Here we will look at the simplest one, the one I used in a previous video without really expanding on it. I created an image folder in the root directory where I made a 2015 folder with 6th month subfolder. You are free to go further and overcomplicate the path between the root directory and your images, but if you will start thinking about doing it to keep your images organized, you may consider switching to a CMS which will manage all of this organization for you. Let's create one more month folder and throw a few images in it. Now when we create a new post we can include a link to our image. You saw me doing this in a previous video, but I will go over it again for you. This time we will save it as an HTML file because we have not done it before. So the first thing we can see is my poor typing skills, so let's correct it. You can see that if the image is larger than its container, it will go outside of its container width. To fix it, Bootstrap has an image responsive class. Now we can have images displayed properly according to the layout. It's a good practice to keep images in the folders according to the blog post you use them in. Let's step up our jQuery game and create an image preview for every blog post we have. You can recall that I have mentioned that unique values for posts are stored in the YAML settings section. Therefore, we can specify an image option for our new blog post as a path to the image we want to use for a preview. To make jQuery display this image on a blog page, we will need to edit liquid for loop in the blog page HTML file. Let's recreate the entire thing. We will have each blog post featured in block where image goes first, title second, and a little darker shade date at the bottom. Let's put an image responsive class on the image again. and correct my silly typo. If we preview what we have in the browser, we will realize that we do not have images for other blog posts and jQuery did not ignore them. You can also notice that blog posts are displayed with double date and no month name. Let's quickly correct it. A simple solution is to attach a default image to blog posts that do not have an image set for them already. It can be a tiring job to set default image for past blog posts one at a time. So for the example purposes, let's take this default picture and assign it as an image for all blog posts that do not have preview image options set for them. To do so, we need to replace the liquid tag with an if statement, where we check if post has an image option. If it does, use it. If it doesn't, output the default image. Let's save the file and see what we have now. We can see that the post that they did not have a post image set are displayed with default image. Thus our mission is accomplished. You can fit the knowledge that you gain in this video for other needs, not only images. For example, we can set keywords for each page by using a unique name for the option as M keywords and write a couple of things here. Then we need to edit the head.html include file and add a line with an if statement, where we will check if the page has M keywords option set. If it does, jQuery will generate a meta tag with name keywords and content is where we will place our page M keywords content and if statement. If page does not have M keywords option set, jQuery will ignore it. I will leave links to Liquid and YAML syntax documentation in the description to this video. Hope you have found this useful and see you next time.